the garlic parmesan so the garlic parmesan and then we got the lemon pepper mm -hmm. so we about to dig in chit chat with y'all see what y'all got going on today oh yeah and then we got baby isaiah in the background he over here eating his celery so yeah so let's dig in let me get that ketchup all right Y'all haven't had wings since okay. probably like two weeks ago when we had the tag together. Yeah. That's the best wings I've ever. Yeah. Okay. You want some ketchup? Yeah. You want it on the side? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna so. the onions on the <laughs> No, you good. And then we're gonna say some for your sister. Yep. I'm so hungry. And what we ate today. Mm-hmm. Y'all, they got the best ranch dressing and um wing stock. I love they um ranch. So what we talking about today, Jada? Mm -hmm. Well, how we been in school? <laughs> mm -hmm. School is almost out, so I'm so glad because you know the summertime is like literally right around the corner. Almost my birthday. Yep, it's almost my baby birthday. My birthday is April 21st. So, we're going to be doing something for that. <laughs> but, yeah, so, they doing good in school. The baby's doing good. He will be eight months this month on the 20th, actually. So, he's growing. You eating your celery? Mm -hmm. Y'all, he back here eating his celery. He's so cute. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Momhood is going good. I'm still currently nursing because um, he's strictly breastfed. Like, we try to give him table food. I give him, like, little celery sticks or some type of fruit or vegetable. He play around with it, but he don't really too much care for table food, which I'm okay with because, listen, breast milk is the best. like a lot of drums. I'm really not a drum person. I would eat them, but I do prefer flat sometimes, especially if the rings are like crispy. But yeah, whatever. Well. That's good. That's what you have to eat. Mm -hmm. 
serious example. So, <clears throat> y'all, I'm over here shaking up my um, Gatorade. So today I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about my little birth story, having Isaiah. It's been seven months ago, so I feel like I'm not as traumatized to tell the story <laughs> because a lot of time has actually went by, but I went into labor. Well, I actually was a day late. I was a day late um, because he was due on the 19th of August. But I ended up having him the next day, which was the 20th. Throughout my pregnancies and with all my pregnancies, I had a midwife. Shout out to Jenny. She has always been my doctor throughout all of my pregnancy with my girls and my son. So, um, you know, I was going back and forth to see her. Of course, being I'm in my 30s, I still was considered high risk. So I also, you know, had to see the high risk doctors, which were left a bad taste in my mouth, I would say, because they wasn't as attentive to you as my midwife was so i wasn't a big fan of that high risk clinic so x for them i still follow the guidelines throughout my pregnancy still went to go see them but that's only because my midwife my midwife asked you know me to go and you know i usually follow her lead you got the celery we're, no, right here, look. Mm -hmm. Is that? You pretending. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, so, long story short, I was high risk my whole pregnancy or whatever. In my eyes, I wasn't really high risk. It was some health precautions that I felt like I did take just to be on the safe side for me and my baby but at the end of the day I was fine so the day of no the day before I actually was due I went to go see my midwife she was like okay listen he's not here you may have to deliver at the hospital I was so sad because I have never delivered at the hospital. I have always delivered at the midwife um, and at the birthing center. And this time around, I could not deliver there. So I was just like, what in the world? But, you know, I follow her lead because Jenny knows what's best. So at the end of the day, I went with what she wanted us to do. So get to the hospital, not the same day, the next day. Jenny ended up checking me. She helped open up my service a little bit. So by that night of the 19th, I was going into labor, but it was mild contractions. Mild contractions. And then after that, the next day, which was the 20th, was when I was in full-blown labor. I labored most of my time at home. I was on the phone with my best friend. Shout out to you. And um, we just was counting my contractions. I was in the shower. And, you know, she was just like, oh, girl, like, they come in, like, back to back, back to back. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I knew I was in labor. But, see, I have such a high tolerance for pain. I didn't realize how far I was with my labor. So, eventually, we ended up getting the girls together, got our stuff together. And we took the girls to my mom. <clears throat> so, they stayed there throughout the... Um, you know, my delivery and stuff. Because, of course, you know, with the COVID thing, they don't allow that many people at the hospital. So, prior to that, I also had, like, a strict... I would say I had, like, a strict list of what I wanted for my birth. Like, I wanted my birth to be similar to the birth center, even though I know I couldn't get that 100% at the hospital. But I wanted it to be close enough.
dropped it on the floor, poop. So, contractions start coming literally three, two minutes apart. So, I'm like, okay, we got to go. But I knew for a fact that I wanted to at least birth as much as I needed to at home before I got to the hospital because I was determined not to get induced. So, I, we take them off. We, well, we drop them off at my mom's and we head to the hospital. In the midst of heading to the hospital, we decided that he was going to eat something first. And I'm like, okay, where are we going to go? So he was like, the quickest thing I can get is Wendy's. So I'm like, okay, babe, let's do that. But that ended up not working out because when we got to Wendy's, the line was long. And I, at this point, I'm like holding on to the little latch part in the car because the contractions was coming, but I was just breathing through them. So we ended up going to sub. And he went to sub and he got him a sub. And he was like, babe, you want some of the sub? I was kind of like, not really, because it's like when you in labor, you don't be hungry. You don't want to eat. So I probably took two bites of his sub. And then when we got there, instead of going to the emergency, like drop off to where you could drop off in the front of the hospital, we end up parking the car and we walk, which helped me out a lot because that helped push down, you know, the baby and just get me more in active labor. Because when I got there, I really wanted to be in labor, like getting ready to have him. I didn't want to have to wait. So we get there, they check me in, um, I told them I was supposed to be induced, you know, yada, 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 you know how that talk go when you get up there. So they finally put me to the room, I got admitted, so now it's like the moment of truth, like how much I have dilated. So I go in the room, did you drop it again? Yeah, he keeps dropping his celery, you dropped your celery again? Hmm? Come in. You're like six, seven centimeters. So I looked at my man. I'm like, yes. I was so happy because you know that once you get to 10 centimeters, it's time for you to push at this point. So they was a little concerned because they kept looking at me like, okay, if she's seven centimeters dilated, she can't be seven centimeters. And she, she just too calm. But, you know, to me, six and seven centimeters is lightweight. Yeah, I feel the contractions, but they're tolerable enough for me to, like, push through, which is what I did. So, in the midst of that, okay, at this point, I think he just want to play with the celery. Um, so, in the midst of that, so we wait in the room. They waited to find me a room upstairs because at this point, I have to go upstairs because that's where the labor and delivery was. So, they wheeled me upstairs. Everybody waving. I'm like, hey. They looking like, what the hell? Because I'm, again, seven centimeters, and they're wondering why I'm so calm. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I was calm. I just, my body just was embracing the fact that I was in labor, I guess. So we get in the room. They hook me up to the monitor. They hook the baby up to the monitor. So I'm just talking to the lady. I said, listen, I have a birth plan. I want to stick with this, you know, just telling her everything I want. So I showed her my list and she said, oh, okay, yeah, we can do that. I wish I remember her name. When I tell you this lady was so sweet and so nice because literally when I was getting ready to have him, she stayed and her shift actually was over, but she ended up staying. Anyways, so we in there, I'm doing good. I'm on the ball. Next thing I know, everything is starting to get a little bit more intense. But then I start getting a little frustrated because I'm going off of what my body is feeling, but I'm having the two 
doctors that came in in place of the nurse telling me something different. And I'm just like, no, that's not what I feel like. The whole time I'm telling them, like, I feel like I need to push. They was like, okay, do you want us to break your water? I'm like, no, because usually it's probably going to end up, you know, breaking on its own. Shortly after that, probably like, it probably was about maybe 6 o'clock, I want to say. I'm still in active labor. At this point, I'm probably seven and a half, eight centimeters. Things are getting way more intense because now I'm feeling it constantly. Like, I'm not getting any breaks at this point. Like, the contractions are literally back to back, back to back, back to back. So, I told my man, I said, babe, I feel like I need to go pee. Let, you know, let's try to go to the bathroom. So, you know, I'm getting up slowly and I make it to the bathroom, but I'm leaning over the sink because I feel like I got to pee, but it's just weird. The next thing we know, we hear like a fuck. And so he looked, and I look, and I'm like, he said, babe, is that your water? I said, I think my water just broke. So, of course, he calls the nurse in. He's like, I think her water just broke. I th she said she feel like she need to push. So, she sent the doctors in to check me. And they're telling me that, oh, it still feels like your cervix is there. And I'm like, my cervix? Like, no. They kept telling me they didn't want me to push because they still feel like my cervix needed to open. I still had like a little piece of cervix and just give it a couple of more minutes and you should probably be ready to push. So, okay. Now I'm frustrated because I know what my body is feeling. My body is feeling like I need to push. And I feel so much pressure at this point. I feel like I want to explode to the point where I almost broke down in tears because I'm like, my body is mentally pushing. My stomach is pushing, but they telling me don't push. Because, of course, you know, they don't want you to rip your cervix and stuff. But I know my body. I needed to push. So... The nurse came in and she was like, you almost there, you almost there. And even my um, man, he recorded the footage of him just telling me like, babe, I, you know, you almost there, you almost there. So depending on how I feel, I may put that clip in this video, but I look horrible, so I'm probably going to block out my face. <laughs> but he kept saying, babe, you almost there, you almost there. So I'm like, okay, okay, babe. Like, I'm not saying nothing, but in my head, I'm like, okay, babe. Like, you know, it's just those words that kind of just motivate me to push through. Because my midwife always told me, when you feel like you want to give up at the end, that means that you almost there. And when I start in my head thinking like I wanted an epidural, knowing doggone well that I ain't got not one epidural for my kids, I said, okay, it must, he must be ready to come out because I was in so much pain, y'all. And they kept telling me not to push, not to push. So I would say by like almost 8 o'clock, it was probably almost like 8 o'clock. They finally come in there and they're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and let you push. So I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> now it's a show because they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're going through this um, without any medication. Like you're such a soldier. You got this. Breathe. I realized that I'm pushing by myself at this point. I'm pushing and I'm feeling stuff, but you know how usually they'll probably tell you like, come on, push, push, push. The baby head is there, blah, blah, blah. I'm I, I'm feeling burning and pain, but they're not telling me nothing. So at this point, I said, you know what? Let me just close my eyes and just push for dear life. Because at this point, I noticed that they're basing my pushing off of my own contractions. They're not telling me to push. I'm like pushing. So I feel like, okay, at this point, y'all just making me in control. So I might as well just push. They saying I'm doing a good job. And I'm just like, okay, so like. Three minutes later, it was like, plop, he was out. And I'm just laying there like, oh, my gosh. I'm not saying nothing. My man is just like, oh, my gosh, he here, babe, he here, babe. And I'm like, okay. And I'm just sitting there, just sitting there like, okay, okay. And then afterwards, you can't get that pool. You can't get that. And you laugh because you know better. You can't get that. You can't get that. <laughs> so after they pass him to me, um, that's when, you know, they, you know, do me, they give me my delayed cord clamping, which is originally what I wanted. I didn't want them to clip his umbilical cord right away.
they did. So they did his um, delayed cord clamping, um, and then after we did that, they finally clipped his cord. At that moment, we was just kind of embracing the fact that I literally just had a whole baby. He was healthy. He was um, eight pounds four ounces. It's okay. It's okay. So yeah, he was eight pounds four ounces, which was bigger than my last because Jada was seven pounds four ounces. So that kind of add up. And then my first daughter was six pounds four ounces. So I feel like it kind of trickled down an ounce per child. I guess the people that say that, it must be true. Um, so that's how that ended up working out. But yeah, so he's here now. His name is Isaiah. He's our new addition to the family. He is such a handful, but we love him to death. Um, and he definitely brings us a lot of joy. So, you know, it was worth everything, I would say. It was worth my pregnancy. It was worth going to them crazy doctors that didn't know what they was doing. It was worth all of it because at the end, you know, I have my son. He's growing healthy and strong. And, you know, and that's my last baby. And I'm not having another baby. Mm -hmm. This is my last one. So I'm going to embrace it, which is why we love on him as much as we do because I, mm -mm. after that delivery, I was like, you know what? Having babies is not for me. I'm going to say that for y'all young girls out there. And when I say young, I mean have a, a husband or a boyfriend and 22 and up. <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it's definitely a blessing. But this is my last one. I got my two girls. I got my son. And I feel like my life is complete. So, that's my birth story. I'm glad that y'all tuned in just to eat with me and my daughter, listen to my birth story, because I never got a chance to tell it after I had him. That was supposed to be a video, but I'm finally dropping it now. But, um, you know, I just want to thank y'all for y'all support. Thank you for watching my channel, and we're going to be out this. But before we go out, y'all know what y'all need to do. Y'all need to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that post bell post notification so y'all won't miss another video. And we out. Peace. Peace.